inflation at dangerous levels, perilously low foreign exchange reserves, floods destroying critical infrastructure and displacing millions of people, global lenders refusing to give funds. But how did Pakistan's economy get to the brink of collapse? Can this be avoided in any way? And what are the implications for India? These are the core questions. Hello and welcome to The Core Questions. Pakistan is on the verge of economic collapse due to rising inflation, low foreign exchange reserves, and the refusal of international lenders to release additional funds. Despite the fact that Pakistan's economy has been in trouble for some time, the floods of 2022 inflicted tremendous damage, destroying vital infrastructure and displacing millions of people. How did things turn out to be so bad? Pakistan has relied on loans and donations from the IMF and friendly countries for many years to prevent economic catastrophe. And it hasn't hesitated in groveling either. This was made clear when Pakistani Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif cried out for assistance at the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights Summit at the United Nations office in Geneva last year. Representatives from Pakistan and the IMF met separately to talk about the extended fund facility, which is currently on hold. In fact, the IMF declined to make an $8.3 billion payment in November 2022 because of the Pakistani government's opposition to its requirements. With foreign exchange reserves at an eight-year low and only enough money to cover imports for three weeks, Pakistan is, as a result, dealing with a severe cash crunch. Pakistan is being compelled to turn to friendly nations and international aid as a result of the door being slammed in its face by international lenders like the IMF. Pakistan is requesting assistance from China as well as a 3 billion US dollar bailout from Saudi Arabia. Donors made a commitment to provide more than 8 billion US dollars to assist Pakistan in recovering from the floods at the ICCRP UN meeting in Geneva. Along with the Asian Development Bank and Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, nations including the US, France, Saudi Arabia, China and Japan have promised assistance. Essentially, what pushed Pakistan to the brink of collapse is downright fiscal imprudence. To put it in context, how long can you survive if your best friend keeps funding you? You'd never get stability. Similarly, Pakistan has been running a political economy dependent on aids and grants from allies and multilateral bodies instead of widening its tax net and multiplying its sources of revenue. Official data over the past 20 years shows that Pakistan's fiscal deficit has reached an all-time high of 25.31 billion US dollars in 2019. This was because expenses kept increasing while the government was unable to find ways to make money, which in turn kept widening the fiscal deficit. And what effect does a huge fiscal deficit have? Pakistan's economy ultimately ended up becoming even more dependent on loans from China and Gulf nations like Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Imran Khan, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, is blamed by many officials for the catastrophic state of the economy. Officials state that Khan ignored advice from experts to contact the IMF as early as 2018 to request a bailout package at that time. Instead, officials said that PM Khan went on a spending binge. But it's important to keep in mind that a majority of Imran Khan's tenure as PM was during the COVID-19 pandemic, which forced the government to spend on essentials for the people. In addition, devastating floods between July and September 2022 resulted in the deaths of over 1,700 people, the destruction of infrastructure valued at 40 billion US dollars, the loss of over 8 million acres of crop, and the displacement of about 33 million people. It's comparable to kicking someone who's already down. In recent weeks, the crisis in Pakistan has gotten worse because the IMF has delayed the delivery of 1.1 billion US dollars because it's dissatisfied with the absence of fiscal tightening initiatives taken by the Pakistani government. The price of food and other necessities has recently increased dramatically for Pakistan citizens. The cost of perishable food has increased by over 56%. Since last year, onion prices have increased by more than 415%. Prices for wheat, a staple of the diet in Pakistan, have increased by 57%. A single roti reportedly costs 30 rupees at the moment. For context, the minimum daily income is roughly 500 rupees, and a typical household eats about 10 rotis a day. 
Pakistan's defense minister, Khwaja Asif, claimed that the country could no longer support its energy consumption in December 2022. Marriage halls and commercial centers have been closing early as a result. What are the implications for India? For starters, Pakistan Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif has contacted India about economic collaboration, which has elevated the Kashmir issue to the forefront of political discussion. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar stated in January that he would not be able to comment on the happenings in Pakistan. But India has stated that it will answer a plea for food and medication from the humanitarian community. On a larger scale, Pakistan's collapsing economy does have ramifications for India's security and strategy. India might have to take in a wave of Pakistani refugees if Pakistan's economy crumbles. It is entirely possible that terror networks will enhance their influence in Pakistan if it is declared a failed state, which would be detrimental to India. Furthermore, with both Sri Lanka and Pakistan going through economic crises at the same time, the intergovernmental organization SARC, that's the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, will lose its influence internationally and China will take the reins, especially if it bails out Pakistan, which would not be an ideal situation for India. Is there any way for Pakistan to avert a complete catastrophe? Yes, that is the answer, but it will not happen overnight. Economic experts claim that Pakistan needs to keep obtaining financial aid from other nations, improve the business climate in order to boost business confidence, stop relying on foreign oil, and concentrate on debt reduction while restructuring the economy. These actions should have been prioritized from the beginning, but now they must take precedence in order for Pakistan to avoid financial collapse. The entire world is interested in learning if Islamabad has the political will and ability to carry out significant reforms and adhere to them. Thanks for watching the core questions. Like and share this video and leave your comments below. Until next time, this is Priyanka Deo signing off. Namaste.